welcome you to the Cherokee National Forest. We have an exceptionally clean river here today. It's a perfect day to get wet. The weather's beautiful, the water is very comfortable. In a wetsuit, you're gonna feel great. These teachers from Hamilton and Bradley counties are getting some tips on the fine art of river snorkeling. Don't thrash around, just be quiet, just flow. Just stay on the tips of your fingers and the tips of your toes, just float easy. So they can experience an underwater world of wonder. There's 76 different kinds of fish out there and we can probably see 30 today. Darters and shiners and hog suckers and stone rollers and you might see some turtles and tadpoles. Yeah, they're easy to spot. Yeah. This is water education for teachers. But you'll still see a truck color up here. I haven't seen one yet. It's an environmentally focused water education program that is integrated with social studies, language arts, math, science. We try to focus on water pollution issues. Getting kids involved seems to be the best way that we've found to get families involved in keeping our watersheds clean. These are all bronze starters in front of us. There's Along like with three. snorkel guide Casper Cox, starters mostly pick stuff off the bottom. But Pat Riggs and J.R. Shute with Conservation Fisheries help the teachers identify the fish they see. That's an easy one to recognize right there. Most well, people don't realize it, but here in the southeastern United States, there are more aquatic species of fish and crayfish and mussels and snails than anywhere else at this latitude on the planet. The tropics have more, but if you're looking at temperate latitudes, this is a rainforest. There is incredible diversity here. While the teachers find it all exciting, there's one fish in particular that has Pat and JR especially excited. Consol log perch are really cool because they're a really intelligent fish. It's funny when you're snorkeling with them, they watch you. It's a very large darter, four or five inches long. They're kind of a sandy color with dark tiger stripes. They have a really cool feeding behavior where they go along on the bottom flipping rocks with their snout and grabbing the insects that they uncover on the bottom of that rock. These guys go along and flip rocks that certainly must weigh several times their body weight. Strong by nature, but small in number, the Conasauga log perch lives a precarious existence. It's one of the most endangered fishes in North America. We've been monitoring uh, fish here for the Cherokee National Forest for about uh, 10 plus years now, and we've only seen probably a dozen in all those years here and a little bit upstream of here. So we know that they can survive here, but they don't seem to ever be very numerous here. So that was one of the reasons that we stocked some. Using seven adult fish, Pat and JR were able to breed over 700 log perch. We had propagated more fish than there were in the wild, which meant that we didn't want to dump them all out in the wild because they were all closely related to each other. After placing colored tags on some of the fish to help identify them, several small groups were released at different points along the river, including here at the snorkel hole. When Pat and JR came back to check on them about three weeks later, they made a remarkable discovery. We found five of the 18 stocked fish within 50 yards of where we stocked them. That's incredible. I mean, we've never seen anything like that with any other species that we've propagated and released. So it was pretty unheard of. But what was even more impressive is we found one of the fish that had moved down from the four or five miles upstream from where it was released. That's a lot of distance for a fish that size to travel. These crystal clear waters are the only place the Conasauga log perch is known to live. But really, it's just a short section of the river. Further downstream, sedimentation from development in agriculture has destroyed the fish's habitat, which means it will probably always be endangered. This is one of those fish that will certainly always need protection. We don't know anywhere else that it ever occurred. Education is the first step in protecting the log perch. It begins with people like JR and Pat, who invest the time needed to learn more about this unique fish. We've made a fairly concerted effort to survey throughout their range to see just how the population's doing and to get fin clips for genetic studies. We're constantly learning things that we can apply to what we know about wild populations and that can therefore help us to manage those wild populations and protect them. It continues with teachers who aren't afraid to immerse themselves in new ways of teaching. 
We're trying to get them excited about what they're going to be teaching their kids. Hopefully they'll use the curriculum more and engage the families in our communities. And it comes to fruition with young minds that are more connected to the natural world. Future leaders who hopefully have a better understanding of how their decisions can not only affect this tiny fish, but the world as well. This is a fish that's very sensitive to declines in water quality. If this fish is doing well, we don't have to measure anything else. This is a good biological indicator and a good measure that this is a healthy river. It's a great example of what we'd like to see in restored watersheds and restored streams in our areas. I'm Ken Tucker on Tennessee's Wild Side. Maybe.